All right, I'm gonna try to do a little video for you on how to install these Tannis liners. Something that's relatively new, but I think I love them. I'm gonna probably be installing them in my own bike, but right now I am installing them on a 27.5 fat tire bike. And uh, so far the rear's been done. I'm about ready to do the front. I've already spared you some of the details by taking the tire off the bead and taking the tube out of the tire. Uh, Tynes recommends using a little narrower tire. You could also run these things seed, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, tubeless. But I, I kind of like this tube idea. Then you don't have to mess with that liquid in the mess. So anyway, here we go. So this is kind of what it looks like. Kind of a, like a pool noodle, but a lot uh, denser, different material, I'm assuming, sure, for sure. But anyway, basically, you just shove it in the rim, the tire. And as much as a, a mess it looks like when it comes out of the package, it does go in there pretty good. You just got to force it in there. And there you have it. And then once you get that done, you um, take these wings, they call them, and tuck them in the bead, the rim, on, on the sides before you get your tube in there. Real important, you want these things to be very straight. You want, don't want them creased. And it, and it does go in pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much done. And I feel my fingers around just to make sure that um, it feels like it's good and up in there, and it does. Then I always recommend, plus Tans does too, but even any time I install a tube on someone's bike or my own, I put a little bit of air in there. It just helps for it to go in there, not all kinked up. Just enough to make a nice round shape, that's all. And then if you got a press the valve, I always shut that thing off. And then this is one of the hardest parts with these Tannis liners. I've done them on uh, all sorts of different size bikes now. Um, so is getting the valve in because that wing kind of wants to get in the way sometime of that hole. So you got to just pull things apart and find that hole, shove it down in there good. Then you want to make sure you're putting the tube underneath that wing that's still exposed. Being careful that your tube is in there pretty straight, not all kinked up, which having that air pressure in there seems to really help out a lot. Just work your way around, shoving it in, and I kind of like before I go too far, making sure it is really in there right, because you don't want any pinches. So basically you're tucking this tube, not only inside the Tana slider, but down into the groove of the actual rim. Then I just go around one quick time to make sure everything just feels right. You know, it doesn't take a lot of time, but gosh, don't rush it. Make sure you do these easy steps. Then once that's done, find your valve stem again and start tucking in the other wing of this Tannis liner.
Because think about this, you get you got a, a big thickness on top of your tire where you're mostly probably going to get a puncture hole anyway. But then also, you still have a lot of um, protection on your side of your tire too with this uh, Tannis armor, they call it. And, um, and then that, that wing, you're actually pushing into the bead of your rim. There again, just go around, check it one more time, make sure everything's in. And pretty much, there you have it. You can see kind of that Tannis liner in there, stuck in the rim there. All right, so now I always like taking and letting out as much air as you can now with the, the tube. Open up that valve if it's a Presta, just press on it. Wasn't in there much anyway. But then just start putting your tire on the other side. And what's nice if you've taken your time and, and got your tube in there where it's supposed to be and your your wing where it's supposed to be, then you know you don't have to worry about any pinch flats. So you can you can run your tires a lot lower pressure. I mean, these, these, they call them um, 650B or 27.5. They're uh, 2.8s. So that's a very wide tire, very fat tire. This bike only has front suspension. So these fat tires, they, they act as your suspension. So. You know, I, I'm recommending to the customer, gosh, try these suckers at even 20 pounds front and rear um, to see how they like them. Because, you know, with 20 pounds of air in here, they're still plenty, plenty hard. And you're going to get more grip when you run your tires with less pressure. Your, your tire will spread out a little bit more. And the cool thing about this Tannis thing is by running that lower pressure here, your tires won't roll. You know, you go through those turns really fast. And if your tire's really low, your tire teams tends to roll and, and not keep its um, form. And so if you can keep a tire at the form that it should be, you're gonna get a lot better traction, a lot better handling instead of that sucker rolling on you. So, um, that's why I say, gosh, don't, don't run them so high. So. It's always a bear that this, um, these Schwabby tires, I really like them, but Sometimes uh, they can really be difficult to get the last section on. They're just really beefy tires. So, yeah, if you're just patient, take your time, you'll get it. And I like using the um, these metal tire irons. Of course, they're made by Park Tools. But yeah, you can use the plastic ones, but good luck. Those suckers, unless it's an emergency, you're not gonna carry these on your bike um, for emergencies, but because um, they're too heavy. But if you are um, working at your house, 
installing tires like this one this is the only way to go otherwise you're gonna just snap those cheap plastic ones one more little section here hopefully and sometimes it's just brute strength to get that little last section on Okay, here we go. There we go. Now we're in there. So now I'm going to add some air and seat this tire to the rim. There you go. I love that magic pop. When it pops, you know it's seated. I always take a close look around the bead here. There's usually a little line that runs all the way around to check to make sure that sucker's all the way in and it's straight. It's not hung up on one section. And that looks beautiful. So, and this sucker is hard as a rock and that's, that's only at 40 pounds. And if this tire gets um, a flat, I don't know how, I mean, it could be a big gash, but you can ride these suckers flat, which is really nice. And if you got a heavy e-bike like this one is I'm working on, there's no way in hell you wanna pedal this thing um, or walk it out of the trail. Uh, so it's so much nicer to be able to just get on that bike and pedal it flat. But chances are, I don't think you're going to get a flat with something like this. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Have any comments, uh, just let me know. Thanks for watching Flying Fletch.